Sometimes I accuse sites of sensationalizing a headline. <laughs> this one, what's the opposite of sensationalizing? Yeah. Downplaying? Downplaying, yeah. Yeah, this is a big deal. Oh. It, it's it's okay. a huge deal, and the headline doesn't really encapsulate it. But uh, earlier this year, Red Hat announced that they were going to be doing a new release of CentOS. Uh, CentOS, if you're not familiar with it, is a community enterprise operating system. It's an open source repackaging of Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Well, Red Hat Enterprise Linux, or RHEL, costs money. You have to pay to run it. And CentOS is basically like a free version of it. You can run it, but you don't get support from Red Hat. And it's been like that for years and years and years, really well over a decade, uh, that you've had this choice. So basically a free version of RHEL. Well, Red Hat announced a new roll-up of CentOS called CentOS Stream. And CentOS Stream was going to be a little more cutting edge. Not as cutting edge as Fedora, but a little bit more. So it would have maybe some packages in it that weren't considered as stable or as secure as what's in actual Red Hat Enterprise Linux and CentOS. Uh, so that was interesting that they announced that. A lot of us wondered, hey, you've already got Fedora. Why, why do you need CentOS Stream? Well, now we found out. They came out and announced that that's it. They're not spending any more money or resources on CentOS Linux 8. And that means they're going to be moving it all over in January to CentOS Stream. And so they've effectively killed off CentOS. That's it. So uh, CentOS 7 and earlier, they're already not developing on. They'll backport security fixes is, is what they've been doing. Um, and CentOS 8 was supposed to be supported for like another, I think another eight years. That's all gone now. So as of January, CentOS is effectively a unsupported operating system. And that's huge because hundreds, thousands of organizations, practically the entire Fortune 500, make use of CentOS in one form or another. A lot of third-party hardware you buy runs CentOS, and this is going to impact them in a significant way. So it's a, it's a huge deal. Well, joke's on them. I'll just keep running CentOS 7, and it'll be <laughs> fine, I'm sure. That works until, <laughs> you know, you need some updated library that's not supported on CentOS 7 or some security vulnerability is found and they don't backport a fix for it. That's that's the problem you run into. Do you see this being like Windows 7, though, where, you know, Microsoft's, all right, we're not supporting this anymore. All right, there's a huge security uh, yeah. flaw. We'll go back and patch it. We'll go well, back and patch it. I, I don't. And the, the reason is, and remember, IBM acquired Red Hat this year. And I'm sure they're looking at the revenue stream. And I, I don't know if I've talked about this in the podcast, but what some companies will do is they know that if they buy Red Hat Enterprise Linux, they can get support. But they can run CentOS for free with no support. So what they do is they build their staging environment with CentOS. and I'm sorry, with Red Hat. And then they build their production environment with CentOS. In their staging environment, maybe they only need two servers in a cluster. And so they buy Red Hat licenses for them. But then when they deploy in production... They do CentOS because they can scale out to 1,000 servers and not pay a dime. And when they have a problem, they can still call for support. It's kind of a way of cheating the system. They don't pay as much as they should. So this is IBM's way of saying, no, if you want Red Hat stability, you're going to have to pay for it now. Uh, what I think will happen is most people will move to other distros, right? Yeah. Uh, Oracle Linux is based off of Red Hat as well, very similar to CentOS, so you can do that. The original founder of CentOS has announced Rocky Linux, which is going to be his new Red Hat based distro that he's releasing. Does it have like a Stallone voice? I don't know. That'd be really cool. Yeah. Linux. The user interface will be called Adrian. Yeah. <laughs> and so um, the uh, the founder of Cloud Linux announced they're creating one called Linux, I think is what they're calling there. So anyhow, there's, Linux, there's a couple Linux. of alternatives that'll be coming out soon. Personally, I never trust new distros. So I think the big impact here is gonna be more people moving over to Ubuntu. I, yeah. think, I think it was Annie Linux. What about SUSE? Are they still viable anymore? I mean, they, they are. They run in Europe a lot, don't they? They do, and I, I never really understood that. SUSE is so popular in Europe and practically non-existent here in the U.S. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not sure why that is. If you enjoyed that segment, be sure to check out our entire podcast available in the playlist right here. And you can always subscribe to stay up to date with the latest tech news and other happenings in the IT world. Be sure to tune in every Thursday for new episodes. I hope to see you there.